This is Alpharius. He's the Primarch of the Alpha Legion. This is from Forge World, but he has a brother, a twin brother. Oh my god. But his model doesn't exist. So, today, I'm gonna make it. And I am Alpharius. It's tabletop time. This video was sponsored by Tacticus. So when I think of what chaos thing to turn this Terminator into, the first thing that popped to my mind was something near and dear to my heart, the Alpha Legion. And I thought, why just make an Alpha Legion Terminator when I can make something with a little bit more brotherly love? So I have an unpainted Alpharius here I can use as a size comparison. And I'm thinking of making Omegon in Terminator armor. And while Alpharius died in the Horus Heresy, Omegon's whereabouts are unknown. He was often described as being part of the Terminator company, the Lernian Terminators for the Alpha Legion. So I want to use that as the basis for my 40k Terminator Omegon. Or is it Alpharius? Or is it Omegon? Now, one of the reasons I thought Primark when I saw this Terminator is that the scale of Games Workshop plastic characters seems to be creeping, creeping, creeping. And the newest Terminator is positively massive. When I compare him side by side with the Alpharius, the Primark, they are almost the same size. So with some minor conversions, I will be able to make this a very suitable Primark scale model. The first things I'll need to set about doing are the broad strokes of this conversion, changing up the pose, which means cutting him in half so I can elongate his torso slightly, as well as completely repose his two arms to be doing something far more interesting. And the first place to start will actually be the torso extension. And that's because I want to pose his arm holding a spear and that spear haft will need to make contact with the ground. And for that to be accurate, I need to know exactly how tall he's going to be. I also have to be careful here that I don't make him ridiculously tall in the torso. So it's only going to be a minor adjustment. Now, luckily for me, while we do have this Terminator captain that Jen had glued up, who was potentially going to be the last space bear, we also, of course, got the ultimate starter set, which has a unbuilt Terminator Captain that I can use for this conversion, which should be a lot easier as I don't have to chop and change this model that's already been put together. So I've cut out the base from the other Leviathan Captain and honestly, I'm shocked. Not only that Alpharius and this Terminator are basically the same size, but that their leg poses fit on each other's bases, like perfectly. It's kind of bizarre. Anyway, that's gonna make this Terminator conversion look super cool next to Alpharius when I finish him one day, because we'll have Alpharius and Omegon. It's gonna be great. If you're anything like me and you love the worlds of 40k, you're also eager to jump into some good stuff that explores the IP. When I did my recent video exploring all the 40k games that had been made up to this date, I found Tacticus and I've been a daily player ever since. It has a really fun gameplay loop and lots of properly represented characters and it's a fun tactical game. I've been playing it constantly as well. Every lunch break, finish doing Warhammer for a job and we'll play Tacticus during lunch. Tacticus is also doing a Tyranids event for their anniversary. So I'm also really excited about that because uh, Hello. Those brand new playable Tyranids will be joining over 50 champions from 13 playable factions within Warhammer 40k and this roster is ever growing. Next week is their one year anniversary event. We will be fighting the Tyranids in exciting recurring events for the celebration week. And they allow you to do these awesome narrative campaigns with fast paced PvE or even player versus player game modes. Something I really like about Tacticus is there is a free to play way to get pretty much everything in the game. Every game mode offers you a unique opportunity to to unlock different characters. You can also grab a battle pass for Tacticus and each season focuses on unlocking a particular character. Van, what are you waiting for? The links are in the description. Join us in playing genuinely our favorite mobile game that we play every day. It's super fun and I can't wait to unlock some more characters and see you all there. But for now, let's get back to chaosifying this Terminator. The first steps of my conversion are drying, the glue is setting, and while it sets, I need to find some alternate parts for things like the arms. And Alpharius is known to carry a spear. Omegon, being very much like his brother, probably carried one as well. When I think big spears, I think this old Stormcast Eternal kit I've got. So I'm going to uh, see if I can find an appropriate bit from here to form the foundation for the Pale Spear Mark II. Too. So I was looking through my bits box and I was trying to find some inspiration. I remembered I have these old Lernian Terminators. These are the Forge World Alpha Legion Horus Heresy Terminators. But unfortunately, as you can see, the scale of these models is so small compared to everything else. The scale creep on Space Marines, even on the new Heresy Marines has been massive. And personally, that's a big issue for me. So I don't really have any plans on using these Lernians as intended 
But what I have found is that with a little bit of modification, I think these arms are going to work perfectly on this conversion, lending a huge amount of awesome Alpha Legion flavor because these are some gorgeously detailed arms. Now there's two slight modifications I'm going to make. I'm gonna make a little bit of a spacer in between the shoulder and the arm just to give them a little bit more width and a bit more space to move. I'm also gonna incorporate a little bit of forearm as well as gauntlet rather than just sticking the hand straight into that forearm. That'll make it look like a multi-segmented armor plate and it should give just that tiny bit more length to the arms and I think they're gonna look awesome. So with all of the kit bashing done, or at least all that I could do at this stage, it was time for me to attack the green stuff. Now, as I've done on a few recent videos, I used a mix of green stuff and milliput. I find for me, this is the perfect combination of materials that I can work with fairly easily. And I was recently asked the ratio, I use about 50-50, although a lot of people err on the side of more green stuff than milliput. It was time for me to hide up that belly extension. And the way I was going to do that was to add in some of that undersuit conduit that Space Marine Power Armor always has. I just smoothed this out and then ran my knife across to make some even segmented areas. Now this large and open exposed area of undersuit wouldn't be suitable for a Terminator or a Primark, so I decided that it needed a bit of a plate on the front side at the very least. So I pressed in some green stuff and sculpted out the shape of a segmented plate that would help to protect the front of this model. Turning the model around to the back, we can see a huge amount of issues related to me clipping off the cloak. Because I wanted to change the wind direction on the model, I needed to remove that Space Marine cloak, but that left a very unsculpted butt. I've seen thousands of Terminators in my life. I'm very familiar with them. So without needing any kind of reference, I just whipped together a fairly smooth Terminator butt plate. Unfortunately, I would go on to put my finger in this and then smooth it out again, but it would never be the same. It's still pretty good, but it was almost perfect the first time around. With Omegon's butt firming up nicely, it was time to make a stylish giant Texan belt buckle. Now, the reason I went for such a a large symbol is because I'm not a master sculptor and I'd need a little bit of space to create an alpha omega in the center of this. One of the things with sculpting is you want to do it in multiple stages, which meant I needed to do a little bit of work later on at night. So I took the model home and created some thin flat strips of putty, trimming them with a knife where I needed. These would act as chaos trim on the model. Now I am making a 40k omegon and chaos are covered in spiky baroque trim, but I personally prefer my alpha legion quite light on the trim, decoration and definitely light on Chaos Mutation. Even though this is a Primark, I'm going to keep the trim to a reasonable standard here. Just focusing on a central piece up each of the legs and around the torso. The last thing I needed to do at home was to create a nice butt cape to join onto the back of this model. The reason for the segmented capes on this is of course to allow the Terminator's jet thruster vents to cool. And I imagine these would create a nice constant billowing epic effect for the Terminator Lord's capes. Another reason I had to do this lower cape is because the remnants of the Terminator Captain's cape would be very hard to clean off and then sculpt replacement back to this Terminator. So it was actually easier to just make another piece of fabric and blend it on where it connected to the model. Now, one trick I did do while doing this is I made sure to wait until my Milliput mix was a much more set. This allowed me to cut a nice square that was fairly rigid and held its shape. So I could bend it and create some flow in the fabric, but it didn't just flop around and lose that shape immediately when under the effect of gravity. I left all that to dry and came back in the next day to attack the hardest part of this project. I had no idea how I was going to attempt to replicate the scales that Alpharius and many of the Alpha Legion have on their armor with green stuff. So I thought I'd just try. I filled out the area in his chest with a thin layer of the putty. And then I used a knife to cut diamond patterns into it. Then used a sculpting tool to indent the top of these sections to start to create a little bit of differentiation between them. I went back and forth with a knife trying to define the edges of these scales repeatedly and eventually got to a point where I felt like any more I was doing was just making it look worse. This definitely isn't the best way to do scales, but I think I've gotten them to a passable level for the paint job and for tabletop. They certainly carry the vibe from a distance and look decent from a distance, but when up close, there are a lot of inconsistencies. If anyone has any tips for sculpting tiny scales, uh, let me know, because uh, oh my gosh, this was a challenge. Another challenge was the Alpha Omega symbol in the belt, which just involved manipulating tiny, tiny strips of green stuff with a toothpick. This was more fiddly than it 
was difficult in a technical sense and it took a little bit of time to get it right. And in that time, everything else had had a chance to dry so I could come in with Trim Mark II. That's right, a little second layer of trim that I applied into several areas, especially around the top of the collar. I also included the chain symbol in the center of his chest. Then came time to glue the arms on in the right positions and I mounted them a little bit higher and further back on this model than the original Terminators, which I think works really well with the Lernian arms. It also makes him feel a little bit more like a Primark. I then grabbed my amazing cape from my Storm Drake guard that has these nice scales on it and stuck it up top, which will really help complete the silhouette of this figure. A final touch up the top here was to use the trophy racks of an old plastic Terminator Lord from Chaos that I have. But the Chaos Terminator Lord model is really old and I have no intention of completing it. It has been well usurped by all of the modern Chaos kits and it's showing its age. I think these lend a little bit more of a 40K and Chaos air to Omegon here and I'm really happy with their inclusion and what they do for the silhouette. These elements on, I just needed to do one more pass of green stuff, blending on the cloak at the back and creating a little bit of that ribbed undersuit to hide the seam where the arms joined onto the model. I also made a small ribbon for around the base of the spear where I'd cut off the retributor's hand to hide that bit of raw plastic. And I created some small rivets and glued them onto the model along several areas of the trim just to add a little bit of detail. With that done, there are some challenges I need to face. I need a head, I'm not sure about this spear but I think I have an idea. So the two missing pieces of my puzzle are the head and a good Alpha Legion spear tip. Now conveniently I have Alpharius, so I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm actually going to attempt to uh, recast these pieces. I'm not sure how well it's going to go on something so small and detailed and already on sprue gates and stuff. Don't try this at home and certainly don't sell or distribute anything you recast, but you know, for your own hobby use. Now we sort of just hope that this works. And that's the perfect amount of silicon to cover everything we need. Now we wait. Now we wait. Only takes about half an hour to set. Now for the moment of truth, uh, did my silicon mold work? Probably, right? Surely. Loosen this up. So I'm gonna be using a fast set rigid polyurethane, which is, I don't even really know what it is. All I know is we've used it before. It sets in like half an hour and it goes hard and high quality. So I'm really gonna work this mold. So the moment of truth has arrived. Did my little recast work? Let's find out. So I'm not gonna be surprised if this white bit cracks off the top because that's what happened to the original. I was really, really hoping that the spear half, the head of the pale spear would have uh, would have cast, but it looks like there were some bubbles. Thing, and that's because we don't have the pressure chamber. The one part I didn't want is perfect. So we have a perfect replica of Alpharius's holstered pistol. The spear is unusable and his head has cast perfectly except for the crest at the front, which is completely just gone, which is like the most prominent feature. So that's great. But look, the rest of his face is cast up really well. So I might see if I can salvage that and use that helmet. We tried and that's what matters. Tell you what. One more. All right, so I tried one more time just because why not? And I was doing other things and we have a functioning pale spear. This conversion is almost finished and Primark Alpharius's brother will soon be walking the battlefields of Warhammer 40K. So one of the things I love about this job is learning awesome new skills. So I think that these turned out pretty well. Let's give them to Dave and see how they fit on the model. Thanks, Jen. They turned out well. So it turns out there are definitely Bob Ross style happy little accidents. It turns out that Alpharis's head doesn't even fit in this Terminator cowl. However, the crest at the front does look a little bit weird, just cut straight off. So I grabbed a head from the Daughters of Cain, which has these nice little snake details, chopped one of them off and glued it onto the top of the crest. I then carved a piece of a Skatari's head off to create the comms array on the side of the helmet, and then ran back to see if my second round of casting had worked. I also wanted to include another element from the original Captain kit, and I love those shields in their shoulders, so I'm gonna grab one of them and glue it on Omegon as well. And I'd also imagine some chain hanging around the waist. Chain is a strong symbol in the Alpha Legion. I glued that around like a belt or maybe a fastener for this tabard and large buckle at the front. And then I also grabbed a spare piece from my Forge World Alpha Legion collection with a tacit plate that has some venom spheres on it. I don't think this will be useful at any point, but it looks cool and Alpharius has venom spheres, so it makes sense. Turns out I'd gotten 
most of the spearhead and given the bubbles and the awkwardness of my mold, I'm not confident I'll be able to get any better results than this. So I grabbed a little bit more putty for one final step and fixed up the small errors on this spear before chopping off the top of the giant retributor glaive and gluing it on. Looking down at the base of the model, I was always not sure if I was going to include this base, but you know, it's actually really cool. It's got this massive screamer killer head on it and the trophy rack I added on Omegon also has a Tyranid head on it. So I decided to keep this and just add a little bit of brown texture putty to fill out the areas that the plastic base didn't cover. I can actually imagine Omegon, the secret loyalist, fighting for the Imperium and trying to fend off a bunch of these new Tyranid hive swarms as they head towards Imperial sectors. The unsung hero the Imperium will never know is watching out for them from the shadows. Hey Dave. Dave. Hello. That was, that was a lot. That was a big sculpt. That took a long time. There are things I'm not happy with, but I think the only way to improve is to just keep churning over projects. I think I could go over this a million times and I wouldn't get a much better result. So I'm gonna call it Omegon is done. Woo. Uh, this has been really interesting process. Never attempted something this crazy in terms of kit bashing with sculpting so many things and so much custom stuff. So it's really exciting and using a whole bunch of things, different mediums. So I'm gonna have some much needed rest and then return tomorrow for some painting. What are you doing? Um, well, I'm... <laughs> I'm in the level. I'm doing the campaign. Stop playing the game! <laughs> but it counts as work, right? <laughs> we made a guild and you guys could play with us. So if you'd like to join our tabletop time guild, we're gonna show it on screen now. Join up because there's limited guild slots and it'll be fun to play with you. We play it daily, so we'd love to play with you. You have to say a solemn goodbye to XWGGS, my current guild that I randomly joined. I'm sorry I'm leaving you. Show Vashia I made this so I can do dailies guild. Bye. Please carry me. So taking Omegon home, I got to the airbrush booth and I'm going to record for posterity the paints I use because I always forget. So the first layer is Phoenician purple that I airbrush over the whole model. And then from a higher angle, I spray Screamer pink to give it a little bit of intense saturation. Now on this particular model, I used quite thin down paints in gentle layers to get a really controlled gradient. I'm a little bit more heavy handed with my line infantry, but for Omegon, who is often seen as darker Terminator plate, I do like the idea of a darker vibe for this model. The next two colors I use are Vallejo Scurvy Green. This spray comes in at about a 45 degree angle, coating most of the top areas. And then finally a Xenothal in Araman Blue. Now Omegon in the Horus Heresy often wore the black plate of the first company and the Lernian Terminators, but the Alpha Legion often change their schemes. And for a 40K Omegon who was taken to the fore of his Legion leading warbands in secret, I thought more of a traditional Alpha Legion paint job would work well. My Heresy Alpha Legion are a little bit more bright and saturated and my 40k Alpha Legion a bit darker to reflect the darker times of the 41st millennium. I'm going to do the same thing on this model. With the airbrushing done, I use Temple Guard Blue and Araman Blue to layer, highlight, and line highlight all of the blues over the model. And then it's time to settle in to base coating the rest of the model. That was a self-indulgent paint tutorial for myself when I come back and watch this video. But for the rest of you, let's watch some base coating. All right, painting is going well. I have been smashing through some base coating and the blues are done. But I think it's time I take a little break stretch and get some fresh air. Ah, that's much better. I do a slightly brown tinged bright steel non-metallic metal for all of the trim on my Alpha Legion. And for the metallic areas, I do a basic non-metallic metal using blue tones. I also painted the undersuit using some dark grays with some gentle highlight. And then for focal areas on the model, the plasma in particular on my Alpha Legion, I paint in a bright green. And for the eye lenses, I went for a orange. Orange, green, and teal all work together really nicely. To reflect his history, I painted the cloaks on 
on this model black as that suits Omegon's old company. And I painted the tassels on the shoulders and the tabard a nice purple as the tertiary color of my Alpha Legion. And I painted the trim around the tacit belt and also the shoulders in a leather black as well. For the tip of the spear, I wanted to include a little bit of gribbly slime to hide some of the rougher green stuff work where that cast spear tip didn't turn out as amazingly as I'd intended to give the look of some horrible alien venom oozing from this weapon, or maybe some blood of the Tyranids he's slain on his base. Those steps done, I finished out all of the rough areas details on the models, including the basing elements and the parts on the trophy rack. With the model's paint job complete, you can lean back and take a look at the results. Now it's time to bask in the glory that is Alpharius. Okay, and here he is. It's Alpharius in a tank. He's driving the tank. Without further ado, we have Alpharius with a jetpack. It's Alpharius with a jetpack, yay! All right, but actually, here he is. It's the big boy himself, it's Alpharius. Okay, here's Omegon. Yeah, I didn't finish painting the base. I'm sorry, uh, this was a lot. Big thank you to all our patrons for watching and supporting this video. If you'd like to check out our Patreon and join our mini club Discord, or perhaps get involved in those weekly videos or our monthly mini review, links in the description and we'd love to see you there. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed the journey of me creating Alpharius's twin brother Primarch, Omegon. And another big thank you to our sponsor, Tacticus. You can join us playing the game. Check out the links in the description Join our guild, it'll be really fun to play with you, and make sure you check out their anniversary event running all week next week. Also, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps us know that we're making the right kind of stuff. This has been really fun. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, just remember that I am Alpharius. <laughs>